and good, good, good morning and welcome to Navy's use case webinar being presented by Miami Children's Health um, Bridge Blood Transfusion. The Navy's award-winning use case for the value of health IT. My name is Arnold Simmons. I'm the manager of quality and patient safety, and it's my pleasure to moderate this presentation. The mission is promoting the use of high IT to improve the quality of healthcare delivery. Promotes and advocates the integration of clinical decision support and best practice guidance. Acts of clinical data to analyze progress and enable patient safety tools for healthcare organizations, patients, patients, and community members as vehicles for improving patient outcomes. The Hickless Davies Award of Excellence is the pinnacle of HIMS Value Recognition Program. The award recognizes outstanding achievements of organizations from around the world who have utilized health information technology to improve outcomes and value. The award-winning use cases have been peer-reviewed to validate patient business outcomes in care delivery. It is a pleasure to our speaker for today's webinar, Jennifer Shapiro. Jennifer is a clinical systems analyst at Miami Children's Health System and the lead on Jennifer is a We're transitioning into a set expert role and from there into her current role in information technology. From there, she was the in SME, Jennifer immediately became a true member of the CERNA EMR implementation team. She has many successful initiatives, including most recently the clinical video organizer. Thank you, um, Jennifer, for joining us today, and I'll turn this presentation over to you. And I'm going to pass the ball. I am. My name is Jennifer, and I'm, gonna, I'm here today. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about bridge blood transfusion and the implementation we did here at Nicholas Children's Hospital. Okay. So we um, a little bit about a background on bridge and um, just blood transfusions in general. Um, every year, 21 million um, blood products are transfused in the U.S. and these transfusions can lead to errors. So we're you know the U.S. is seeing one in every 12,000 transitions, we're seeing an error. So it's a pretty big issue um, throughout the U.S., and we really wanted to take a look at this and try to streamline the process here at our hospital. Um, the errors can lead to um, many different serious side effects, including death. Um, so we knew that it was very important and something we really needed to focus on. So a problem. Um, in 2014 and 2014, we had 11 blood transfusion errors um, within our hospital. Um, and in 2015, we had six. So we really wanted to get these numbers down. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what the blood product errors were. So we had, in 2014, we had two um, wrong products administered. So um, our first one of these, was a patient with the George syndrome who we um, administered non-irradiated blood to. So patients with this diagnosis should always receive irradiated blood. So that was our, our first error. And then we had another wrong product error in 2014, and the one we had in 2015 were both the same. Um, our patient received stock blood for 
receiving autologous, so it should work the other way around, and they received the wrong product. Rest of our errors were transfusion delays. We had nine in 2014 and five in 2015. Um, delay in our institution means that the product had to be returned to the blood bank for some potential reason. Um, so our goal with this implementation was obviously um, to you know, increase patient safety, which would decrease length of stay, decrease and reduce our costs. So we we set off with our nursing team and, um, and our IT team, and we really wanted to find a product that worked best for everyone. Um, we looked into um, bridge blood transfusion, our Bridge Medical. Um, we did on this and chose this product because, number one, it was integrated with our EMR. So we really wanted something that would be integrated, easy to use, and something not um, a, a huge workflow change for our users. Another huge point for nursing that they really wanted to incorporate was um, scanning. So they wanted to um, patient identification at the bedside. This was very important to them. And they were familiar with scanning. We currently um, scan the patient's wristband. We scanned medications. We scanned lab specimens. So we wanted to add blood to that process. So we are um, a, a multidisciplinary project team um, with many um, people from many different areas. Um, nursing nursing directors were led project um, with the help of IT. We had nursing and staff nursing and leadership from all the different areas: surgical, nursing, emergency medicine. Um, oncology, hematology staff who really um, give a lot of products there. Our blood bank was very involved, um, education, as well as all our different aspects of IT. So we kicked off the pro um, we kicked off the project in the end of 2014, um, October 20 in 2014, and it was a four-month timeline. Um, we really, and like I said, we really included our, our project team in all decisions, all aspects of testing, um, validation. We did before, you know, we did different workflows for prior flow and current, you know, current state, future state workflows. So we really included them. We met weekly, and we went live in February of 2015, and that was a three-day conversion process. So I'm going to go through, before I actually get into Bridge, um, the actual system of Bridge, I want to go through some different workflows that were impacted using Bridge. Um, so we know that giving blood is just not getting the blood and giving it to the patient. We have a bunch of processes prior so that we make sure the blood is given the correct blood is given to the correct patient. So Bridge in itself is the application used when the product is in hand and it's going to be administered to, is going to be administered to the patient, but there's a lot of steps before that. So I'll go through some of these um, here. So the first step would be for the provider to actually order the product. So that's step one of this entire process. We have an, a blood product order set within our EMR that the providers place. So this process, we were lucky this was in place prior to our bridge, bridge implementation, so it wasn't a huge change for our providers. They were used to this um, order set. They knew how to order the products. Um, so this didn't have to change much, was, which was really good. Um, so they go through, they place the orders that they want relating to blood. They can't place these orders outside of this order set, so it forced them to use this order set and to make sure that they order up and screen if needed. We have it set up where, for which it specifies here in the order set. The product has to place two orders if they're going to place for, for a product. So they're placing an order for the lab and an order to tell nursing you're going to be transfusing transmitting a product. So the nurse actually gets a task in the EMR telling them you're going to be transfusing a product. 
With PLAN, we were able to embed some clinical decision support assistance. So one of them was this type and screen alert that we created in the EMR. So when the provider's placing those order sets I had shown previously, if they do not select the type and screen order, they will be alerted if the patient does not have an active type and screen the the provider will get this alert and it'll tell them you the patient does not have a valid lab specimen and you need to place an order for a type and screen so it actually reminds them you know before them placing the order for the blood and getting down to the blood bank and then starting to prepare the blood this warns them you need a type and screen before they can you know we can go any farther so we have that one in place and then we have this second one so this second um alert we put in place um, as we were going live with Bridge because of our errors that we experienced in 2014. So DeGeorge syndrome um, is an autoimmune disease where the patient cannot receive, um, need to receive irradiated blood. So we had that error and we wanted to really find a way to prevent that from happening in the future. So what we did was we placed this alert. So when the provider goes in to place the order set for the blood and they order um, a PRBC that isn't um, irradiated and the patient has a diagnosis in their EMR or a problem of DeGeorge syndrome, it will alert the provider telling them, make sure you order irradiated blood for this, this um, patient. We're going to go through how our, our process was prior to Bridge and then how it changed after um, we went live with Bridge. So our type and screen process changed pr pretty drastically um, when, we, when we implemented Bridge. So prior to Bridge, <laughs> we did our, we always needed a witness to collect a specimen. Um, so what would happen is they would place the order in the system for the type and screen. The phlebotomist would come or potentially the nurse would get the order and she would go to the patient's bedside to collect the specimen um, with another nurse. So what they did is they would go into the nursing station and they would have to find this um, arner, a whole set of stickers and a red bracelet. So those were stored at nursing stations, different places on different units. It wasn't a consistent process, but they needed to have these these R number stickers and with them when they were collecting the specimen. And then both nurse phlebotomists or the two nurses would need to sign, I don't know, 25 of these little stickers on this R number sticker sheet, and then they would apply those to the patient's um, wristband, this R number wristband, to the specimen, have spares that went down to the lab when they were doing the the, the and the cross matching of the blood. So it was a it was an extensive process and everyone had to sign and find the stickers. So that's what they would do. And then once they collected the specimen, um, they would go into the EMR and document on this R number I view section, where they would have to transcribe from the sticker into the system this R number that they had, and then apply that wristband on the patient. One implemented bridge, so we really wanted to look at this um, this process. We heard from other institutions. Our our bank actually led this initiative. We have from other institutions that they had kind of gotten gone away from this R number process. So we wanted to determine like it was needed if it was something. So we really um, reached out to numerous other institutions to determine best practice when it came to this R number. Which the R number was just like another patient identifier. But the system was already going to be checking all the identifiers within the system and and matching them. So we were able to actually process and determine that we could actually eliminate the whole R number process completely. So there was cost savings on different, a lot of different areas within that, which we'll talk about um, later on in the presentation, but it was um, 
definitely a great process that we were able to streamline and eliminate some of it. So here is our process after Postbridge. So what we do, we get the order still through the system, through the EMR for the tape and screen. The nurse and the phlebotomist, so we still require that second person at the bedside to verify the patient's wristband and verify all, you know, date of birth, all those identifiers. We collect the lab. So once they've collected the specimen, we actually document and, and scan that specimen into the EMR in our power chart specimen collection. So there it's also verifying this patient has this order, it's the correct patient that we're collecting, et cetera. So it's doing some checking there. And we've collected the specimen, then they um, document their type and screen verification so that their witness, so they document that they have a witness um, verifying this. But we, again, were able to eliminate placing that red wristband on the patient, all those stickers, all of those, that whole process. That blood bank, they were also able to really um, streamline their process and save a lot of time and make it a way more electronic process. So the process before was much more manual. Um, we did a lean, um, we looked like through a lean process here, and we found that um, with the new process we were putting in place, the blood bank would be saving 35 minutes on every product that they were going to be um, inventorying and cross-matching, et cetera. So it was a, a big cost savings and time savings for those that staff as well. So back to pre-bridge. So, so prior to bridge, the next step in the process, so we've we've ordered it, we sent the, the type and screen down on the lab. The next process was okay, the specimen's ready to be picked up from the from the lab. So this process was also very manual and required many phone calls because there was no way for the nurse to know when the blood bank had the product ready and they could actually come go pick it up. So there was a lot of phone calls that had to happen. Oh, is the product ready? No, it's not ready. Let me, you know, let's call back. Call me back in five minutes. So there was a lot of phone calls. Once the, the nurse got the okay that it was ready for them to pick it up, they would then have to go find or get this pink card, we called them, which was just a pickup card, and they would fill in all the information of the patient that they were going to pick up and their number, et cetera, and put it onto this card to take it down to pick it up. So again, there's more possibility for transcription errors because they had to manually end doc, you know, manually write down all this information. When we went live with Bridge, we implemented this process as well. So what the so it became a much more uh, electronic process. The nurse, what happens is once the lab, the lab team it has the product ready, they go to the EMR and they go to that lab order that was placed by the provider and they complete it, completing completing that lab order. A task for nursing that goes to the task list, telling that the product is ready. See this task on their task list, it eliminates most of those calls and they're able to go down and, and know that the product is ready. So instead of, and then we also remove the PIN card, so instead of writing that information on the PIN card, they go to their order, they go to that lab order that the, that the um, blood bank completed, and click on it and they reprint the requisition. So this requisition we created, it just has all the information information, all the order information, so they take that down to the lab when they're picking up the product. So put to bridge, we did document electronically, but it was in our EMR. And it wasn't kind of at all to the information of of on the blood bag itself. So the nurse would um, have the blood bag in hand, she would administer it to the patient or, or start the transfusion, and she would document, she would go back into the EMR and document here in um, iView, it's called, but she would have to manually tab in or enter all the information here, so the unit number, expiration date, blood type, et cetera, what to be answered, entered off the blood bag. So again, risk of trans transcription errors. 
Are finally on to the actual bridge um, um, itself. So here is the beginning of the process within Bridge. So the nurse actually at this point, the nurse has the product in hand and she's at the bedside and ready to administer it to the patient. So the first step is well, let me see. First, she the nurse. Um, into the EMR. So we created a link within our EMR that they just click on the toolbar and it launches them to this web-based application of Bridge. So there's, we um, set up their credentials so that it automatically logs them in. There's no need for them to remember a separate password or go to a separate website or a, a different link. They can access everything straight through the EMR. So they click on this link and it opens them up to the, the Bridge system. Um, the only option on the first screen, so it's pretty much like a blank, blank screen, the only thing that they can really, the only thing that they can do from this screen for the most part is scan the patient. So what they do is just, they have to scan the patient's wristband. Once they scan the patient's wristband, um, it opens them up to number two, which is, has a, you know, a toolbar, a, a banner bar across the top with the patient information. The results, if you expand that, it will see a few, you can see a few pertinent um, results that have been pulled in from the EMR. So we set that up. To me, the nurses don't use that so much because they really have already, should have already assessed all labs and reviewed all that information before they have the product in hand, but it's there if needed. So they have this menu of different things they can do. So we're gonna walk through the just start of a transfusion. So they would click the start transfusion button. It would open to step three. So the, the next step would be to complete um, a set of pre-checks. So we, this is able to be fully customized. We matched it to what our policy, or we, re, we redid our policy at the time of this go live since there was a lot of changes, but we matched these pre-checks to our policy and what's expected of our nurses. We were able to make some required, so they have to complete those. Any with the red asterisk means it's required. So we're able to end the verbiage of all these different pre-checks. So that was um, helpful. We completed their pre-checks. The next step would be actually to, to scan the that they receive with the blood from the lab. So two different labels um, that they get when they receive the product. One is the product itself, so that, and then the next one is the recipient tag. First, they scan the recipient tag. They scan one 2D barcode, and it fills in all of number four. So everything on like medical record, patient name, unit number, all of that is automatically populated from that one scan. If there's any mismatching, anything that doesn't match up, you're gonna get an error and you're unable to proceed. So that's our first line of checking is the actual recipient tag. The second set of scans are on the blood bag itself or the product itself four scans that the user has to scan at this point. And it's in a U shape, so I don't, I'm not able to show you, I don't have it um, on slide, but it's a U shape that the nurses have to scan. So that was definitely a big piece of our training is you need to scan in a specific order, and it, but it tells you, so number five is the unit number, number six is the attributes, number seven is the expiration date, and then number, I mean, yeah, and then number eight is the blood type. So you have to scan this particular, or if any scans don't match up, they'll receive an error. I guess I'll take a minute here to discuss um, one hurdle that we kind of had when we were doing our implementation and our planning for our implementation. Um, our OR staff, we, we really wanted to scan uh, blood in our, our OR. We give a lot of blood within our OR. A lot of our errors were occurring um, within the OR, so it was very important to our nursing team to make sure that we found a process that worked for them. And familiar, so like the rest of our nursing team, we're familiar with scanning. Our intra-op nurses really weren't, so we really had to drill down to 
what they were doing within the OR. We had a lot of separate meetings just for the OR staff. We reached out to many different other institutions on process within the OR, and what we really found was we were going to be one of the first at the time to implement um, blood scanning within our OR, but we, we still really wanted that to happen, so we had to really kind of work at, like, look at that process and tweak it from our inpatient work to make it work for them. So one of the things we had to do for them was the anesthesiologist within the OR was the one who was actually administering the product, and, and they were the one recording those signs um, on the patient. So for the nurse to have to manually enter in a set of vital signs, like step nine, um, it didn't make sense in their workflow. Vitals were pr pulling in every minute or every few minutes, and they didn't feel like as information wasn't being able to be pulled from the, uh, the main. So they did feel that it made sense for them to have to put in a set of vitals at this point when it was just constantly being recorded. So we ended up deciding to create different positions within Bridge. So Bridge um, was able to create, you create a position within Bridge and then you link it to a position within our EMR. So what we decided on was to do like a, a transfusionist role for majority of our, tran our nurses on the inpatient side, but we created a surgical services position within Bridge for our surgical staff. So we were able to change, make some minor changes on the positions to make their workflow make more sense for them. So we removed the vital signs um, completely out of their workflow. And we also, so having a second witness in the room at that time wasn't always possible. So because the system really is it's the second witness, um, we were able to remove that process um, at the time of go live from the, our OR staff as well. Our nursing staff on the inpatient side felt it was important, very important to keep that second witness at the beginning of this implementation to make sure that everyone understood and that you know that the second one was, they still wanted to get that second witness even though the system itself was truly a second witness. So we kept. That's how we were able to differentiate the two workflows was creating different patients. We also created um, a blood bank role with Bridge as well. So just a little bit about like some changes we had to make around workflow. So once, um, so for step nine, this inpatient, they would document a set of vital time, vital signs on admission. I mean, on uh, initiation of the transfusion, uh, and then they would continue to the start transfusion. The, um, number step 10, which is a few additional pre-checks, what, what type of line they're giving it to, um, what rate what they were going to start the transfusion at, et cetera. And then the last step would be to start transfusion. So we also had to do a lot of training around this start transfusion button because all of steps 1 through 10 should occur before you're actually Cutting the, the blood to the patient, but step 11 is tricky because really you wanted to click. So sometimes we had seen at the at, um, at the beginning of our implementation that they were starting the transfusion, where like they actually had connected the patient, and then the physician decided last second we don't want to give the product. Or the patient became unstable. There was something, some reason why they actually never could give them the product, and they've already started it. Bridge understood they had already given the product, and then that product um, wasn't able to be used. So we, on the IT side, had to come up with a way to recover that blood brought blood back, um, et cetera. We had to like recover the product. But we, um, it wasn't. A, it's not a simple process. It had to go to our database team. So it was a lot of steps. So we really stressed on education that steps one through ten happen before you start the product. But step eleven happens once you've started that transfusion on the patient. So that was a big um, learning. We had. We definitely had some, you know, learning things that had to happen right on go live because this was a, a new process for everyone. The main process within Bridge. There are some other processes that I'm not going to like go each step, but I'll just talk about um, in general. So, 
So within that main screen, there's a lot of other steps. You're able to hold transfusion, so if the patient needed to receive another medication or they weren't reacting well to the product, you can place the um, product on, on hold. Um, and every transfusion, once it's been completed, so if you hold it and need to stop it and end it because of a reaction, or if you've just completed the transfusion, you need to end the transfusion within Bridge. So um, they have to go back into Bridge and end. And it just asks them to select a product that they were transfusing, transfusing and it asks a, few, uh, an end, a set of vitals on a transfusion. So that process is important. That is what actually drops the charge for the product once the transfusion has ended. So it's pretty important that our users are going back in and ending it. It's nice because Bridge was able to have a report built in that nursing on the front end can run to see any products or any transfusions started and not ended. So that's the one report that our nurses are using frequently. We recommend every shift to confirm that there's no transfusions left that haven't been ended. So that's a, a big, was a big process change, but important workflow. So I had mentioned the whole transfusion. Um, that can happen when you, like I said, there's the potential for a reaction. So if the patient does have a reaction, um, they can hold it, and then if it's actually a, a big re reaction, they can end, they would end the transfusion, and they would choose that there was a reaction. There's a question, and you would choose yes. So once they choose that yes, it has them fill out some vitals, some information. It, it gives information about our, our policy and what needs to happen when a transfusion reaction occurs, and it also um, Create an electronic form that with all the information of the patient and their reaction, and it sends it to our blood bank directly through a um, through a printer. So that was a huge change for our nursing staff because before it was a complete you completely manual process. They had to go find the reaction form, complete the form, and walk you know walk it down to the blood bank. So it's a, a big time saver as well. This is a little hard to see, but um, it was another um, ad feature that the nurses and the physicians received within the EMR. So this is a, an M page or a summary page that is within um, our EMR that the physicians can click on for a particular patient and see all the re, re, um, transfusion they, transfusions that they've received. It gives them all the different details, if they had a reaction, last vitals. So this is really good for any chronic patient who, who needs to get blood a lot. All right, now to the numbers. Um, this slide's pretty exciting. So I kind of talked through our different errors um, in 2014 and 2015. So you'll see those there in the, on the green line. Those are different um, errors. So we had five in Q, um, in Q1 of 2014. We went live with Bridge in uh, end of Q1 2015. Um, we did have four errors right around our implementation time. These did occur within our OR. Um, we're attributing that to uh, a little bit of a learning curve. Again, I had mentioned they have never had never scanned blood. Um, or any even medications within our OR. So it was quite a bit of a learning curve for them, and we really got education in there to help them understand the process. But since our, our patients are go live, we have not had another bridge air, uh, blood air. So we have been zero to date. Um, that's really exciting. You'll see in the gray bars going up, those are our total number of transfusions per quarter. So um, we've stayed pretty, you know, there's not really exact um, science to that, but it, it stayed pretty consistent between 1,200 and 1,700 products that we're administering every quarter. And then you see, can see the trend line there as well. You're also um, able to save money. I kind of had done this prior, but um, that blood bank cycle time of 35 minutes that I spoke about, that's saving $35,000 and change every year on that additional time saved by those. Um, and then our elimination of those pink cards that I spoke about, the R number ban and the R number 
member stickers. So the product cards are saving about close to $1,000 um, a year on those and $8,000 a year on our, our number stickers and um, the bands. So that was with a total savings of $44,460 per year. I would say there's a lot of other cost savings I think that happened with Bridge that's kind of hard to measure and we don't have exact numbers on, but definitely even the nursing time that was saved on some of those processes I think um, definitely have given us some cost savings as well. So this is another thing that we, we kind of looked at, um, our waste of blood products, um, and it has really drastically decreased. Um, in 2014, we wasted um, 44000 and more, almost $45,000 a year on on wasting of blood products. Um, and from our go live in 2015, we're down to 26900 which is under the national benchmark of about 34000 and and in 2016, 21,000, and first quarter of this year, 6,000. So I think we're on track to stay well below that national metal benchmark. I'll, I'll finish up with um, a little bit about the reports, which I also touched on. We have m many reports within Bridge that are available to all of our end users. Um, on different, a bunch of different things. The one that I would say we use the most is that, you know, transfusion started and not stopped, but these are available um, to other end users and I think they're really involved with this and looking at how, how we're doing and our risk team is really involved with all the different errors. I didn't mention, but I'll mention it now, we were able to, because our errors have been at zero and we've been doing so great with that, we were actually able to remove the second witness that I spoke about that we did not go live with um, with our inpatient nursing. Comfortable after using the system and seeing, you know, the results, we worked with our risk and nursing team, and we met and decided that it was going to be best to that we take away that second witness, and we took that away for inpatient nursing probably mid 2016, and still there's been no errors, so we're really happy about that. So we're we're continually trying to find um, better processes and new ways to help our users um, with this system, and uh, blood bank as well. They're also um, involved. They have many um, reports that they can run on their side as well as they use these bridge reports. Um, to, to information, but they can see, you know, total number of transfusions, the cost savings, all that is mostly managed by them, but our end users are involved, and we really um, stay close with them to get them involved in, in if they're in there or how can we make the system better. Um, it's important that it's a joint effort by all areas. Um, and that's, that's it. Thank you so much for, for listening. And Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, great, great presentation. Uh, 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 thank you for joining us today for the uh, for this Davies webinar. Um, we'll use Kate's webinars and information on how to apply for the Davies web uh, Davies Award can be found posted at the Hims Award website at hims.org backslash Davies. Okay, that was an excellent presentation. I, uh, you know, 